What is up? What is up, everybody? I'm your host, Mike Balco. Welcome back to another episode of the Michael Balco Show. First of all, I am super, super excited to announce my guest. He's a former NFL linebacker for the Kansas City Chiefs and Green Bay Packers, five-year NFL vet, and a current sports analyst for KCTV5. Desmond Moses, how we doing, my man? How you doing, brother? <laughs> Thanks I'm doing for good. Me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, it's another day to be great, brother. So uh, that being said, first and foremost, we got to rep your area code. Tell us a little bit about your hometown of Willingboro, New Jersey, and what makes it so unique. Yes, sir, man. I'm a proud representative, man. It's um, Willingboro, New Jersey is a small little town, man, but we have a ton of talent there. Um, it's it's inland, so we're not we're not the Jersey Shore. You know, I used to get a lot of that back when that show was popular. But really close to Philadelphia, man. We had some great athletes and producers and musicians that um, came out of my, my my neighborhood. Sean Phillips being one of the other NFL guys. You see, one of my actually it's on this side, one of my guys, uh, Ben Ajalano. I shouldn't mess his name up. <laughs> He's also from Willingboro, but great little town, man. Um, Hard nosed man, it made me who I am, but I'm very thankful, man. Very proud to be from the borough. That's a sweet little like Jersey layout you got going on yeah. there. That's probably the coolest <laughs> backdrop I've seen since the year and a yeah, half man. I've been doing my podcast. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Because Christian so. Kirksey over there, too. Sheesh. Yes, all sir. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I got a chance all to right. play with all these guys. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Out of high school, you went to Iowa for you ultimately transferring to Tulane. Tell us yeah. about your recruiting process as well as kind of the decision-making process when it comes to taking your talents to not just that initial school, but also to like taking your talents to a new school. Yeah, it was a process, man. I was a three-sport athlete in, in high school, so I you know, I played baseball, basketball, football. Man, I was recruited in all three. Um, so for me, it was, it was a great opportunity and a great experience being that you know, these schools, these big time names were coming to little old Willingboro, you know, head coaches pulling up to, to talk with, you know, just some kid from Willingboro, New Jersey. So truthfully, it was an honor. Um, I ended up going with Iowa. I committed my junior year, actually during basketball season. Um, Coach France came, he came to see me play basketball. He's like, I think this kid's an athlete, <laughs> you know, so I could get it in. But it was, it was fun, man. It was, it's what all kids should experience, man. I always push that college experience because it's something that really, um, gave me perspective as a young man. Um, and then my choice, obviously, to go to Tulane was it was a difficult one. You know, we had a good team at the University of Iowa, but I was still, uh, you know, a fairly immature young man, had all the skills and stuff. But, you know, there's a maturing process that comes with it. So um, when I had the opportunity to go down to Tulane, I had to sit out almost 18 months, which was difficult. But um, for me, it was it was something that turned out to be very valuable. You know, I had to lock in as not only a an athlete, but most importantly, a student, because I had to go 18 months where I had to, you know, stay eligible, make sure my grades were tight. And, um, thank God I had some people around me, a great network that allowed me to, to stay focused. And um, man, my career at Tulane speaks for itself, man. I think I'm still fourth all time in sex in a year and a half <laughs> or two years up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so you mentioned you were a three sport athlete, baseball, yeah. basketball, football. Why did you pick football over baseball and basketball? To be honest, man, I still sometimes I, I ponder that question. Um, but the, the real answer is I was it was the easiest, man. I, I gained 20 pounds every year of high school, which um, for a lot of kids seems difficult. But for me, it was very natural. I didn't start lifting weights until my freshman year or going into my freshman year. My dad was very adamant about it, just, you know, not wanting to step my growth and height and all this stuff. Um, I considered myself a big time basketball player. And, you know, I wasn't my own right. I started varsity in all three sports as a freshman. But, you know, to gain 20 pounds every year and, you know, to have the athleticism that I had, man, football was just naturally the very, you know, the very easiest, <laughs> just to be candid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, it worked out for you, bro. You made it to the league. So, I mean. Yeah, yeah you, not bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not bad, I'd say. Uh, so following your college career, you declared for the 2012 NFL draft. You went undrafted despite, you know, that great two-year span at Tulane. Yeah. Um, what kind of chip did that give you as you embarked on that NFL journey? Man, it was a, a chip, a bag of chips, I'll say. It was something that really gave me the drive throughout my, my entire professional career because that tag kind of stays with you undrafted, something I just despised, you know, because I knew there were guys that I could outplay and had outplayed. And um, my rookie year, I went in and got a chance to show it, you know. One of my guys I got on the wall here, rest in peace, Kevin Green, man, he was a, you know, 15-year vet, 
Hall of Fame outside linebacker, but he was my position coach in Green Bay. Um, and even ahead of that, there was a guy named Alonzo Highsmith who came to Tulane. And he was like, look, I'm going to get you to I'm going to get you to Green Bay one way or the other, you know, and unfortunately, I wasn't drafted. But fortunately enough, he kept his word. And, and as did I when I told him, I said, hey, I won't let you down. I got to go in there and work with guys, you know, work alongside guys like Clay Matthews and, and Eric Walden, true professionals, man, guys that gave me tidbits throughout, even though we were competing. Um, Kevin Green created an atmosphere which was was brotherhood, you know. So it was, you know, we rooted for each other. We we you know we didn't no egos involved in that sense, man. If we had to come out, man, they didn't hesitate to to see a young undrafted free agent come here and there. And um, I made my own plays. You know, I, I had seven starts down there my rookie year, and it was a great experience. Obviously, playing with Aaron Rodgers and Michael Finley's, the Greg Jones, the you know, I, the, the list goes on. Um, just a great organization. It was very pure, man. It didn't seem, it didn't feel like at all like a professional organization. It was, it was about the team, man. And that's something that I really value. Yeah, for sure. Like you just kind of mentioned, um, you know, you got to come in, and you got to play right away. The Packers picked you up as an undrafted free agent. You not only made the fifty-three man roster, but you played in all sixteen games, making seven yeah. starts, like you said. Um, did you expect? <clears throat> Truthfully, did you expect to come in right away and make that big of an impact right out of the gate? Well, I did, man. It, it was something I was – I never lacked in confidence. You know, I, I knew mentally that was the number one thing that I, I would give me a chance anyway. You know, I was two, three days ahead in the playbook, man. There was never days where I came and it was like, what's going on? You know, I had a great teacher in Kevin Green. But also, man, Dom Capers, you know, the defense coordinators, um, um, Mike McCarthy, the head coach, these guys had a lot of confidence in me just seeing my work that I was putting in on the field, putting in off the field. Um, all of those things came to fruition and, and they didn't hesitate to put me in there. And for a young guy, that's it goes a long way to have the confidence of those guys and not feel like they're on the fence or, you know, that any play they could pull you, man. Going into my second year, they named me a starter before I, you know, popped my calf going into the offseason or coming out of the offseason, I should say. Um, but these guys just truly believed in me. So I wasn't that surprised. I had guys like Charles Woodson in the back end that came up to me. It was like, Mo, you're going to help us win some games this year. And I'm like, this is Charles Woodson, man. This is the Charles Woodson, one of my idols growing up. So um, just a great atmosphere is something that, that helped me be the player I was. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you got that opportunity to just come in and ball right away, too. That's yeah. that's what's up. It makes the story that much better, too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, following that rookie year in Green Bay, you're picked up by Kansas City. Kind of, I know you mentioned, you know, you love the atmosphere in Green Bay. You love the family yeah. culture they were creating. <clears throat> what was it like having to switch teams after after that first season? Um, you know, for a young guy, I man, it was very disheartening. You know, I went to being named a starter, obviously dealing with injuries. And um, I think Green Bay was just in a space where they were, you know, they had a lot of guys on the roster who were banged up and they were like look if you're hurt you're out you know and i, I get it you know sometimes you got to put your foot down as an organization just to set a standard um but leaving my guys like mike neal and, and bj raji and eric walden i mean these are guys who i spent time with every single day who, who i've learned so much from excuse me um it was difficult man i i, I think I, I not to think i actually shed tears man I, I cried the day they called me i was the final cut man and it was something that was it was just tough you know then the next day i had to go and be a professional show up in kansas city um, at that point, I wasn't 100 percent healthy. I was still playing with a, a broken toe unknowingly. Um, so it was a tough transition to, to have to go to a new team, you know, try and set a new reputation for myself and, and do it while dealing with some injuries. So it wasn't the easiest transition, but one, I just had to be a professional and um, make the best of it. So I did. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm about to ask you the hardest question I ask every <laughs> single athlete on this show. Okay. And you can give me multiple names if you want. Who is the best player you've ever played with and against in your entire career? You can take it back to high school, college, little gritters, any any level. <laughs> man, I'd have to say, uh, obviously, in Green Bay, man, I got to play with a guy named Aaron Rodgers. Um, he was just a special talent. Um, he was a guy where, you know, you could be in perfect position. And there was a couple, I'll give you a quick story. You know, I'm covering Jermichael Finley one time. I mean, I'm step for step with this guy. I'm like, oh, yeah. This guy drops it in right over my ear and, and literally into the hands. And I look over at KG. He's like, hey, don't worry, kid. That's Aaron Rodgers. That's why we pay him the big bucks. You know, so just to see this guy throw the ball, the arm talent from any platform, you know, he didn't have to be on balance. He still didn't have to be on balance. Um, that's a special guy. And then 
I also want to add in there Clay Matthew. You know, this was a guy in his prime that I got to see him. You know, he was 152 pounds, man, just to see him kick guys' tails. You know, I'm talking about flat. Guys truly feared him. I've seen him put blood in guys' mouth. He's just one of those physical guys. Um, athleticism off the chart. This guy could cut off either foot, inside, outside. Going into, you know, being a professional, I'd never seen a guy with that type of athleticism. And, you know, you watch it on TV, it's, it doesn't do it the justice, you know, as, as it is to, to watch this guy in live and watch him up close, watch him work every single day. Um, I got to add in there my one of my OGs who's also on the wall. I'm mixing it up. Tom Mahali, man, this guy was a worksman. I mean, he he would go in. This guy practiced jiu-jitsu, hand practice. He was a technician by all right, one of the best I'd ever seen. Um so those are a couple guys that I got a chance to play with, man, that, that I could say was easily the best players. And then against, I would have to say Megatron. He's one of those guys. We played him twice twice my rookie year um, while in Green Bay. I mean, this guy's all a 6'6". Six, six. He runs 4'3", four, 4'2", four, whatever it is. He was unstoppable, you know, to see a guy with that, that type of size, speed, um, skill set. And he wasn't a rah-rah guy. You know, I had a lineup on him against, against him one time, and I look up at this guy. He's, like, looking down on me, and he chuckled, man. I was like, not too many wide receivers chuckle when they got a linebacker in front of them that's ready to, you know, put some hands on him. But this guy was just so confident in his ability. And um, it, 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 I know why he chuckled afterwards. He hit me with a head slap and got up right into his route, man. He was a, just a special guy. And then last day, I got a name, Thomas Brady. You know, I got a chance to play against him a number of different times. And, um back in 2015 when people kind of thought he was on a decline. And I'm like, where, you know, he's still my number one pocket passer of all time. A guy who can just stand up in there tall. He's, you know, six, five, six, six has, I mean, I think he's increased his arm accuracy and arm strength over his career, which seems almost impossible, but man, he just has a special skill set. He's a great teammate and a great leader, man. He's, he's one of those guys that I really admire still to this day. I say a uh, great group of names you just gave us there. <laughs> Woo! That's probably the most loaded group of names I think I've ever yeah. heard on the show. <laughs> all of the right. all the way across the board. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, really. Like, it's crazy. All right. What is the NFL locker room culture like, at least from like your experience? I know sometimes, you know, the, the common fan might hear certain things about a player that happened in the locker room and they just want to assume the worst. We know it's not like that all the time. Kind of from your perspective, what is like the NFL culture, like the locker room culture like? That's a great question, man. I would say it's, it's a brotherhood, um, truly. You know, it's one of those things where, these are your peers, you know, even when you're in the city, you know, I played in Green Bay, Kansas City, obviously, you're not necessarily going out with, you know, folks that are, that just live there. I mean, you're there for, for a job, you know, you're there for your guys and for your team. So it's something that, you know, most players, all players, I would say, miss the most about the game once, once it's over, you know, to have that brotherhood. Um, like I said, in, in Green Bay, I had the B.J. Rogers, Eric Walden, Mike Mills. Man, these guys live five houses down. I, I literally would walk my dog down there and, you know, we, we play cards, man, grill up some wings, have a few cold beverages. Um, this just really it was all about it. I never had any brothers growing up. So this is the closest thing I ever had to it, my teammates. And then you hear, you hear things in, in the media that you don't listen to so much as a player. You know, I've, I've heard about the you know, type of guy Aaron Rodgers is. I'm like, look, you're talking about a, a – a true teammate, man. I, I was an undrafted free agent, and every time I ran into this man in the hallway, he, he'd mimic me. That I call I had to make when we were going up against him. Why off? You know, he he looked me. Hey, why off? You know, kind of fucking like this is just a teammate, man. He's a guy, and um, I got a lot of love for him, man. That's that's really what it's like, man. Just a normal normal locker room, man. It's it's a beautiful thing, man. What were your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers yesterday with the "We still own you"? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't talk too much trash, or he doesn't get too riled up often, but he listens to a lot of the media, man. He hears a lot of that stuff, maybe even a little more than he should. But he takes that stuff personal, man. That's what drives him. Um, he's been doubted throughout his career, even all the way up to, you know, to the draft, you know, coming out of, out of college. He was a guy that people weren't necessarily super high on, you know. He backed up Brett Favre, and they was like, well, can he fill Brett Favre's shoes? And, and so far, I think he's filled him fairly easy man he's he's a great in the hall of famer in his own right so he's just one of those guys that wears everything he hears those comments that you media guys put out that we media guys put out 
<laughs> and he uses it to drive them. <laughs> yeah, facts, facts. Man, that's what I love too is like us, we're in the position where we're just like, we don't have to like dog on dudes. We can just <laughs> do this right here, bro. We can just talk them up, you know? That's the Show great love. thing. Show, Show them love, love bro. That's the thing, bro. That's the <laughs> thing. There's too many anti-negative people out there in the media, Seriously. bro. We got we to gotta switch the culture real quick. Yeah. All right. Do it. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, my man. So the average career span of an NFL athlete is a little under two years. Mm -hmm. Give me like some advice, um, some tips to all those guys out there. Like how how did you manage to stick around for five years? What did you do to set yourself apart? Maybe like yeah. what did you do like to maintain your diet, workout routines, things like that? Just kind of what did you do that – helped you stick around in the league for five years? I would say my number one thing is is to work in the off season. You know, it's it's really easy as a, a professional athlete, you know, as a college athlete, high school athlete, you're broke. You know, so the off season is just more work. You're trying to get to that, that level. But you'll see as a pro that the guys, that mentality can change somewhat when you get that financial security. So, you know, my one tidbit, my one tip to these guys would be work in the offseason, improve your game every single year, because that's what will keep you elevated, man. And, and these GMs, these scouts, they know the guys, and they can see the guys that come in and shape, that worked on new moves, that have added pieces to their game, and that's what really keep guys around. Because once you start to plateau, man, there's some young, faster, better-looking guy that's going to come and try to <laughs> take your spot, man. And, and generally, you know, as a GM, if you can get these guys for cheaper, with similar, even sometimes lesser talent, man, they'll go with the with the lesser talent. That way they can build a team and, and pay their stars. So that's just the ugly truth of the NFL. But in order to stay in it, man, you got to improve your game and take it personally in the offseason. Get with those trainers, find those set of guys, even guys around the league, man. Go work with those guys, the specialists. Um, I went and worked down with worked with a couple of different pass rush specialists, stretch, but just to try to improve my game yearly. And that's one of the things that I would say helped me for certain. Yeah, I mean, that's great advice right there for sure. I mean, you you always have to set yourself apart, especially at the highest level where there's constant roster changes. I mean, the 53-man roster is not the same on any given week. So you <laughs> always, even during the season, you have to consistently prove yourself. Like you said, whenever – you know, you had to you had to leave Green Bay and go to Kansas City. You just never know, man. So yeah. it's just one of those things where you just got to stay on top of it. And you don't even have to wait till the NFL to do it, man. You got to do it in college. You got to do it in high school. You got to do it, man. You know, you got to put in that work so you can ultimately get to that level, man. Just put in that work. Yeah. Improve. What? Improve. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What is some of the biggest adversity you've ever had to overcome and how did you overcome it? Honestly, leaving, you know, the University of Iowa was one of the most difficult times. Um, again, I was I had made some immature choices um, and then there was some conflict in the way that the story was released. So for me, that was just a time where, you know, I wasn't with my guys. Again, we talk about that brotherhood. I, I wasn't able to go eat, lift, work out with the guys that, you know, I had come to know and love. Um, and as an 18 year old kid, you know, that was very, very difficult. You know, that's the time where I had to really be introspective, look inside and say, okay, Des, what, what can I do? What do you have to do in order to still get to the goal, which was obviously be a pro. Um, and for me, that was, hey, still eating right every single day, still getting that work. And even though nobody's there to tell me, hey, here's your workout regimen, I had to drive myself. And, you know, for a young kid and, and to do that in somewhat isolation, um, it was difficult, man, but it was something that I value and still experience I value to this day because it's something that made me who I am. It's made me more self-driven overall. It's helped me in my personal businesses um, as well as getting into what I'm into now as far as the sports analyst and just, just on the daily as a dad, as a, as a man, you know, trying to self-improve always. There's always a way to get better. Um, so I would say that's one of the things that really just chiseled me in, made me the guy that I am today and I'm truly thankful for. But it was definitely an adverse situation. Yeah, for sure. What have you been up to since you hung up the cleats, my man? Kind of tell us what your <laughs> life's been like. How's retirement? All that good stuff. Yeah, man. It's it's been you know. There's still always a pull for the game. I'll tell you that, man. I, I stay in shape. Look, if I got a call today, I I, I would be ready. <laughs> That's you know, I'm 32 years old. It's it's just you know, I, I'm just getting back from a workout. But it's just the drive, man. Um, but since I, I retired, I. I Took about two years off golf, <laughs> went on some vacations, man. It's things you're not able to do, celebrated some holidays, things you're just not able to do as an athlete that you have to sacrifice. Um, 
obviously I, be, I became a father to a beautiful baby girl, Naomi, and um, all of these transitions, just the cycle of life is, is happening. Um, got to hang out with my friends, do all these different things, but probably the most, you know, important thing, one of the most things I'm proud of, A, is being a father, but B, is, you know, building some companies like real estate now, licensed realtor, um, but we have an investment company to where we, you know, flip homes and help other investors flip homes that we kind of built from the ground. So, you know, that takes up a lot of my time now, but it's it's good time, you know, something that I can really still create my own hours, um, make really good money, be able to support my family, but be there. You know, that time is the most important thing. I'm not locked into any schedule. Um, I'm able to still just create that room, man. And, and for me, time is of, of the essence. It really yeah. is. So that's what I'm most proud of, man. That's awesome, man. Congrats on all that stuff, man. That's insane. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have one last question for you, Desmond. I appreciate all your time so far and all the great insight yes, you've given us so far. Um, what kind of advice from you would you give mm -hmm. to any young athlete out there, you know, trying to just get to that collegiate level, trying to win a starting job on varsity, trying to ultimately make it to the pros just like you? What kind of advice can you give to them? Man, that's funny because my dad gave me a great piece of advice and I'm going to pass it on right now. Going into the NFL as an undrafted free agent. I came in with Nick Perry, who was a first rounder, same position. Um, you know, going off to camp, my father said a very simple sentence. Don't compare, compete. And by that, he meant, you know, don't look around. Don't look at the way these guys are being treated. Don't look away. You know, don't worry about that stuff. Look at yourself, you know, worry about you and how you can improve daily, how you can be the best version of yourself, the best player, and then stay locked in. You know, that's. That was just great advice for me. I was, like I said, two, three days ahead in a playbook. Physically, I'm, I'm, I was making sure I was in the best shape of my life. And and I didn't compare too much, you know, because they're going to treat the first round guys slightly different. They, you know, they're invested in these people. But if you show them the teams, whichever level you're at, your high school coach, if they see that you're willing to work and willing to improve your game, I promise they'll be willing to invest in you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a great piece of advice. Don't compare, <laughs> compete. Whew. Man, that's about to be an <laughs> IG caption for sure. You got it, bro. <laughs> hey, all right, Desmond, where can we all follow you out on social media? At Desmond M, at D E Z M A N. Um, fairly simple. That's my first first name, last letter, or the first letter of my last name. Um, yeah, I'm giving out tips like that all the time to young athletes and 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 just people in general, man, that, that want to try and improve and be the best version of yourself because life is a it's a constant journey, man. It's about improving. It's the pursuit of perfection. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much for hopping on the show today, Desmond. I appreciate you so much, my man. And uh, I'm excited to see how the rest of your journey unfolds. Yes, sir, man. Thank you for having me, Mike. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. <laughs>